If you are ingesting large amount of data for analysis or looking to simplify the development of event-driven microservices, then you need to check out Cloud PubSub. Welcome to PubSub Made Easy. I'm Priyanka and in today's episode, we will dive deeper into subscribers. A publisher sent messages to a Cloud PubSub topic. Subscriber application creates a subscription to this topic in order to receive those messages. A topic can have multiple subscriptions, but a given subscription belongs to a single topic, which means a subscription cannot be receiving messages from more than one topics. Check out episode two of this series to see how to set up subscriptions. Cloud PubSub delivers each published message at least once for every subscription. There are some exceptions to this at least once behavior though. You can configure message retention duration and the value can be between 10 minutes and seven days. By default, a message that cannot be delivered within the maximum retention time of seven days is deleted and is no longer accessible. This typically happens when a subscriber does not keep up with the flow of the messages. Oh, and make sure to create at least one subscription when you create a topic. Otherwise, the messages published to the topic with no subscription disappear into the ether. Once a message is sent to a subscriber, the subscriber should acknowledge the message. But until it does, the message is considered outstanding. And it stays outstanding until the subscriber reaches the configurable limited amount of time called ACK deadline. At which point, Cloud PubSub will attempt to re-deliver it. And while a message is outstanding to a subscriber, Cloud PubSub tries not to deliver it to any other subscriber on the same subscription. Typically, Cloud PubSub delivers each message once in the order in which it was published. However, messages may sometimes be delivered out of order or more than once. Item potency and duplication is important to think about regardless of PubSub since it can happen simply because publishers republish the same content. A very simple way to achieve exactly once processing is to rely on Cloud Dataflow's PubSub IO connector which solves some of the harder problems like this for you. You can also achieve ordered processing by having the publishers send the sequence token in the message. Stay tuned for more on this in the upcoming episodes. Alternatively, Cloud Dataflow gives you very simple to use tools to produce ordered output or process messages in order. Now, a subscription can use either pull or push mechanism for message delivery. And it's configurable, so you can change or configure the mechanism at any time. In pull delivery, the subscribing application explicitly calls the pull method, which requests messages for delivery. The Cloud PubSub server responds with the message or an error if the queue is empty and an ACK ID. The subscriber explicitly calls the acknowledge method, using the returned ACK ID to acknowledge receipt. A lot of this is abstracted in the client libraries where you may, might simply create callbacks that are invoked when a new message arrives. The client library itself will manage all the acknowledgement deadlines and extensions. In push delivery, the Cloud PubSub server sends each message as a HTTPS request to the subscriber application at a pre-configured endpoint. The endpoint acknowledges the message by returning an HTTP success status code. A non-success response indicates that the message should be resent. Cloud PubSub dynamically adjusts the rate of push requests based on the rate at which it receives success responses. Now that we know how push and pull subscriptions work, how can we choose which method should be best for our use case? Well, stay tuned for the next episode to find out. Now let's talk about the life cycle of subscription. By default, subscription expires after 31 days of inactivity. Inactivity can be no active connections, pull requests, or push successes. If Cloud PubSub detects subscriber activity, the subscription deletion clock restarts. But by using subscription expiration policies, you can configure the inactivity duration or make the subscription persistent regardless of activity. You can also delete a subscription manually. And if you create a subscription with the same name as the deleted one, the new subscription has no relationship with the old one. Today we learned how to subscribe to Cloud PubSub messages. We looked at at least once delivery, push and pull methods. 
Join us next time to learn more about choosing between push and pull subscribers. If you liked this video and would like to see more such content, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.